I think a lot of people would say this is one of the first, uh, well, one of the best first weeks, maybe first fortnight of an expansion. People have been talking about the honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody rightly said, oh, yeah, but every expansion has a honeymoon period. But this time it has been different because there's been no looming, uh, you know, terror in the horizon of, like, you know, bad mechanics or annoying, you know, just that annoying yeah. shit, right? Yeah, there's no need for legendaries on the fucking horizon. Yeah, yeah. So I think fairly objectively, this is one of the most fun. You can, I, I think, make a pretty fair case and maybe lead and felt uh, a bit more fun to some people because the class content was so up so many people's alleys. But mm -hmm. I think regardless, this has been a super strong period of time. Now, I saw this tweet on Twitter and then I did a quote tweet of it because I thought it was interesting. This has been, um, this is Nursa who uh, works for Wowhead. Uh, this has been the most fun first week uh, of an expansion I've had so far. It's going to be a real shame a week from now when events and other world stuff will no longer give good gear and everyone will be back to boring raids and Mythic Plus and the world will be empty again. And that's, I think, a fairly, uh, you know, it's a fairly legit thing to think about. Uh, I mean, if you think about, say, the Mythic Raiders, you know, Dakor and his posse over, in, uh, over at security, they're probably not going to be... Going crazy in this when it's, you know, Mythic time. Yeah. Um, I do think the trifecta of raids, Mythic Plus, PvP for Endgame has grown quite, uh, you know, a bit stale. At this point, having the world give gear um, has been a fun experience. The only new thing now is the professions, and that will cover everything, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So overall, I thought it was interesting. I thought it's like, yeah, it is a fairly good point. It's the one of the things that we keep on talking about. The idea that, um, you know, ultimately, the end state is every season we have our slate of seasonal content and now the world of warcraft that those artists made uh, almost feels like a very inefficient main menu uh to a lobby based game it you know it almost feels like that and the, the destiny problem yeah it's the destiny problem like you know you look at destiny you're like wow look at all of these big zones people have made anyway <laughs> <laughs> so you know, th there is that concern, and maybe even it would be more extreme in World of Warcraft than it would have been in Destiny, because Destiny did have weekly content to do out in the world. Yeah. So that's something that a lot of people may be a bit worried about. This has been great, but are we just going to go straight back to the status quo? So I thought that she brought up, um, you know, a really good point, a really good design point, right? This yeah, is something definitely. that we've got to that we've got to work out because, on the one hand, like. There is a reality where if all of that, uh, you know, the soup loot somehow scaled up to like just below heroic, sure, loads more people will go and do that. A bunch of normal raiders would be thinking, why am I doing this? <laughs> maybe, maybe, because, you know, sometimes if, if loot competes with an activity, that can be a bit weird, as hmm. Mythic Plus and uh, raiding have done with each other to the degree where Blizzard have changed up some of the uh, tuning of Mythic Plus this time around, so it competes a little bit less with rating, which has been kind of interesting. So I was thinking about this. It will this. be interesting. <laughs> it will be. Uh, and the thing that, um, also probably fair to say, uh, one thing I like to mention, maybe I word it wrong, I like rating, I agree with you, uh, M Plus not so much, but that's a me thing. I'm liking it more and more, but also, like, yeah, fundamentally. For me, like, if Mythic Plus is about, you know, oh, fuck, we need to be 32.39 seconds faster to push the key at plus 25, I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah. Mythic Plus has been fun to me at the level where you are just doing the thing and you're not thinking about the timer because you're you're going to time it unless a colossal mistake happens. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that like very competitive Mythic Plus, it just does not appeal to me whatsoever. I'm not really... Uh, I would only... I, I think I'd only speed... I'd only enjoy speed running something in, in single player. Yeah, um, there's a lot of... That's a personal thing. Yeah, and there's a lot of... So I think to follow up on that just slightly, there's a lot of the design decisions that are because obviously anyone could immediately respond well you don't have to you could just finish the dungeon now we're up the time but the point is that all of the design decisions that are made for people playing it at the in, in the way that's intended competitively and quickly and min maxing optimizing all the stuff the design decisions trickle down into how yeah. the community plays it so if you're pugging or if you're like you know if you're pugging and not even just if you're pugging like one person joining four other randoms if you're like grabbing a random in there's a decent chance they'll expect things to be in a certain way. And that meta trickles down from the from the top end that's doing all optimization. So you can play it in a way that's not like worrying about the timer and stressing out the timer and trying to min-max, but 
fundamentally the design pushes you towards doing that. Yeah. In the same way, like daily world quests would want you to log in every day versus et cetera, et cetera. And then it's challenging because if, uh, cause there's lots of people who do like mythic plus, right? That's just like a fact that, you know, we, we've, we've got yeah. to live in reality. But so then the problem is if they turned it into something that maybe me, Nursa and, and you liked more, yeah. maybe it'd be bad for the people who really enjoy it now. So yeah. it is a problem. Um, she does go on to say the fact that the gear treadmill has been the same for the past four expansions now, uh, and that is boring and stale. Yeah. Now, I think that is something we can start to think about a little bit more. It's an interesting problem. Um, yeah, it is an interesting problem. I mean, fuck, you look at FF14 and it's like, it's been very samey, but it's quite simple. Yeah. But that said, FF14 and WoW are completely different games. And the, the well, thing that, yeah, I, that I, yeah. the thing that I thought about with this though was, um, cause I immediately thought about like, what's the MMO where people are doing shit in the world? It's Guild Wars 2. Mm. That's that MMO. So I just kind of said like, okay, how does Guild Wars 2 continue to have a stable population doing map matters? Mm. Uh, you know, I agree. It's, uh, you know, it'd be great to keep more of, of this stuff, this world stuff be relevant. The things that immediately came to my mind were just, could you do more rewards, boosts for alts, bind on account gear? Uh, you know, what could there, what could there possibly be that would feel good? Because it's tricky. You could just say like, oh yeah, people would probably do that if you gave them like 3000 gold, but then you cause gold inflation. <laughs> so it's all kind of tricky. Now in Guild Wars 2, whenever I say a map meta, um, that's like, you know, events that lead into events that lead into events that lead into a big world boss, as an example. And some of these do require map wide coordination, uh, right? Um, and... Yeah, well, yeah, okay. So the map metas are still quite alive in Guild Wars 2. And I, from what I understand, you'll be getting different, uh, you know, potential of different rewards, of course. You'll be progressing along different achievement tracks. They have all these tracks, I, I guess. And, you know, you get achievement points and then you get little chests of loot. Um, Guild Wars 2 absolutely is a bing bing wahoo game. And like, you know, you do a thing and Maybe there'll be a little box of loot in your UI and you click on it and then things come out and you're like, ah, I have my resources now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for a lot of cases, this is the weird thing about Guild Wars 2 where, you know, I, I really like and respect a lot of things in that game, but it is the most ultimate time is money game I think I've seen in a long time. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, right. Girlfriend plays Guild Wars 2. And... She had a moment when she was tinkering around with my dragon, and I was like, so, we don't have to pay for any of these. Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, in Guild Wars 2, you unlock your uh, the sky scale or whatever it's called, and every single, I think, you know, you can change some of the colors of your base one, which is good, but, like, all the skins are just for money, right? They're for gems, but you can turn your gold into gems. So what a lot of people will do in that game is... You know, they will go through all the matters. They will go on kind of like big world boss trains because the way that uh, game's world bosses work is they're kind of like all on a timer, like a regional timer. So you can just like pull up a website that will basically have a timeline, you know, say the next 24 hours. And I'll just say when all the things spawn, and I'll just go around and they'll do all that stuff. And sometimes that'll be for specific rewards, like materials you need to unlock a mount or something like that. But a lot of the times... It's just to get stuff to turn into gems so you can then, with those gems, buy the skin that you want because it's a game with a horizontal, uh, like quite a lot of cosmetic progression that is for gems but can be accessed with gold because you can turn your in-game gold into gems and then generally has a lot more horizontal progression anyway as a game in terms of, you know, you're filling up your masteries and all of that. So it absolutely would not kind of go straight on to WoW. Um, it's weird. It, Guild Wars 2 would be the perfect game for THD if it was vertical. Yeah. I because it is such an infinite, just, you know, gr grind the shit. It's a mm. big, it's a big, big game for that, but in a horizontal way, yeah. which is really, it's like, it's pretty damn different to what we're, what we're used to in MMOs because Guild Wars 2, if you're not aware, they did the whole thing of saying, look, 80's the cap, that's it. You, when, whenever we take you to Cantha in the new expansion, you are not getting more levels. There'll be all your Cantha masteries, of course. But it's not like there's a new level cap and a crazy amount of new spells. You know, there'll be new, um, like, basically subspecs. I think there's advanced classes. I forget exactly what they're called. Um, so it's like a very different structure of game. And it's one that I think... 
It's the reason why Guild Wars 2 is a very unique game and therefore is beloved by a lot of people, but it's also one of the reasons why Guild Wars 2 has always struggled as a game to hit that broader appeal, because it really hasn't fit the mold of what I think a lot of MMORPG players are really used to. Um, I think like a Path of Exile player would probably struggle quite a bit in a game like Guild Wars 2, just imagine. because the sort of power progression they're used to isn't there. So all of this is fairly interesting because there's so many great lessons to learn from Guild Wars 2, but the thing is that it is a horizontal progression game, whereas WoW, for the most part, is a very vertical progression game. And then the problem is, if everything is vertical, vertical progression, um, well, okay, past a certain point, you probably want that to be from your harder stuff, not your easier stuff. But if the easier stuff is in the world, then what the hell do you do? Yeah. But you still... So how do you make the raids feel like, oh, wow, this is the big spooky, you know, spooky cavern I get to go into with all of my friends and fight the big dangerous dragon, and get the best gear in the game. Wow, you know, it's like up in a fucking pinnacle, right? Hmm. But then that person will still enjoy going around the world doing things. So I guess that's got to be cosmetics which perhaps they've got, maybe there's more that they could do. And that's what I've been trying to, uh, I suppose, trying to work out. When we had some some other people who commented on my, um, I suppose, on um, Nerissa's post and um, my quote tweet, War Outdoor Progression. Take opt-in increased difficulty via debuffs in return for outdoor-only higher item level rewards. Uh, I, I guess using horrific visions as an example and apply oh, yeah. that sort of idea to the outdoor world. Um you know, kind of give some more optional difficulty to the outdoor world, essentially. Um, I think that could be, I suppose what, actually what that is saying is basically world tiers from Diablo 4. Yeah. That's world tiers, in a way. You mean world tiers from Genshin Impact? They stole it. Really? Yeah. Fucking, fucking weebs, man. Yeah. They've got it all first. Those Chinese weebs. I mean, it's definitely not, that was definitely not the first game to have it. Oh, yeah. They're definitely a really old concept. But I still hold it in my mind that the two things that will push society forward are yeah. pornography and weebs. Uh, basically. And there's a lot of the, a lot of overlap there, too. There's a lot of overlap. Yeah. I did see in Linus Tech Tips that had a cock light. Jesus Christ. It was basically, do you know what it was, right? Imagine if you replaced the head of a penis with an E14 standard bulb. And then <laughs> you put a little drawstring onto the foreskin. So if you pulled it down, it turned the bulb on. That's some so some artsy twat in London was selling it for two grand. Of course, it and was. then they realized it was just a shitty piece of cheap fabric and a three D printed cylinder. Yeah. Um, so anyway, anyway, as much as uh, yes, Takataku's save the world. Yeah. But now they're called Hoyoverse. Hoyoverse because they got too big. Their rebrand. Yeah. There, I do not like that rebrand. Yeah, no, I was the Hoyoverse had a trailer for, I think it was just Genshin at, uh, just Genshin content at the Game Awards, and I was like, this is so fucking generic. Uh, the game's great and all, but god, so generic. But it's okay, because Honkai Star Rail and Zen Zone Zero will be good. Mm. Definitely. Haha. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, no, I think. Uh, World Tears, what do you think? So, that's a really interesting idea. It's just the problem, I think, with world tiers is you start to split the player base up doing world tiers. That's Unless issue. you do it via scaling, and then it doesn't fucking feel like it's doing anything. So if you, because obviously you go, hey, here's, here's a world boss, it's super easy. Yeah, how do you make that hard? You probably can't, because world boss, you just bring more people. Yeah. You just bring more people with battle reses, more people with stuns, and more people to deserve it down. Obviously, it scales up health-wise, but you can scale up health-wise without scaling up damage-wise. And that's just going to make it way easier. Especially like, oh yeah, you bring 10 tanks, which means nine tanks can just not do mechanics and there'll be a 10 to like stop it from happening. So I think that's, it's an interesting idea. It'll take a while to sort out. Uh, don't, I would like it, but I don't know if that's even feasible with the current system. It's all, uh, it's weird. Because you go, well, you can't have just vertical progression because that only applies to people who like vertical progression and that destroys rating in M+. If you have vertical progression in the world, largely or theoretically, Yeah, because then does, does world yeah. tier 5 drop her heroic plus raid loot, which would start to be a bit rumbly. Yeah, so it's like, do you have, I think, and this is the immediate thought that comes to my head is, because obviously more horizontal is fine, but that only works for certain players. And I think lots of horizontal works for certain players who aren't into the vertical thing. I think like there's basically players who like the Guild Wars 2 and there's people who don't like the Guild Wars 2. Mm. 
and World of Warcraft has historically had both of these players play the game. So you want people who like lots of horizontal progression and lots of doing stuff and getting stuff and like variety and things like that. But then you also need people who, or you also want to support players who like the vertical stuff. So having them actual cross paths seems like the only correct move is logically to have lots of vertical progression split across horizontal tiers. So that would be, say, instead of... And this is kind of what they're doing a little bit, where you think of the Renown as like a different vertical progression path of your Renown going up, as opposed to the horizontal thing. It's like, you f you go cap at M+, plus, and then you go cap at something else, and you go cap at something else, and cap at something else. You get that little toy. But I don't really know how to physically do that in the world, because you could imagine if they completely separated gear out, Here's your world gear. Here's your red gear. Here's your mythic gear. Wow. Or your mythic plus gear. Yeah, then we're talking. Yeah, because then you could see that being, oh, hey, now you've got four entire different gear sets to grind out and to farm up, and they have no interaction with each other. In uh, largely speaking, you could do that. And that's how, obviously, mythic plus and PvP works at the minute. I should say PvE and PvP works like that at the minute. Where you're like, oh, yeah, you want your PvP gear? Go do PvP. You want your world gear? But then the world content doesn't really match with people who want um par in vertical progression so much yeah generally I you have to they, do vertical, they would rather yeah. overpower the world yeah so content. yeah because so for them the thing that would feel good is oh yeah i'm destroying all this shit yeah so you want something with verticality that isn't par which and i think a good example of this is imagine dragon riding taken to the extreme mm. but then that would be kind of interesting to design how do you require how do you get a dragon riding race that's so hard that to complete it, you need to grind out loads of glyphs or unlock a second tier of glyphs to make dragon riding even better. That's almost the idea where you think about like progression in other games where I'm trying to think of examples, but because I haven't played a good game, a good platformer in 40 million years, I can't even think of anything. Also, because I'm re reasonably a skill based gamer, I suppose a progression based one a lot of the time. A lot of like I like to do stuff without upgrades. Um, but. There's likely a way to have that where you get so much better at making soup that you make the soup real good and then get a reward. How do you upgrade your soup making abilities? This is a theoretical because obviously it's like a it's an MMO event, but there's probably something in that of the like the ciphers of the soup ones. Exactly. And that's what like they literally there you go, they did that vertical progression stuff, or like that one track of progression in um in Zerath Mortis, but people saw it as a system. Because it was a system that was super inter interlaced. But I wonder how many people who didn't think about it in the way we do was like, oh yeah, I can just go to the ciphers and get my world gear upgraded and then go go have fun out here in South Mortis doing stuff. So I think there's some there's probably something there. As to what? I haven't a clue. Yeah, it's I, it's very much that's a, the thing. I imagine it's a pretty yeah. tricky problem because I, I feel like if there was an easy answer, they would have done it. Yeah. But they're in this situation where they know that the trifecta is a uh it is a production friendly baseline upon which they can plan content ahead of time, know what they're doing, and they know that it broadly works for a bunch of people. But then I guess because what Narissa said it is maybe in line with what the actually let me find the Destiny 2. Hmm. Uh, the Destiny 2 thing. Because that was... Yeah, okay, so here it is. Article from uh, PC Gamer. Destiny 2 oh, game yeah. director responds to complaints about player burnout. Community has been complaining about this seasonal model for a while. And the Bungie boss wants you to know it's being heard. Um, so, yeah, here it is. From uh, from Joe Blackburn here. Go away, bird website notification. What? Is that not the actual link? Oh, you see, I have a problem. I can't use Twitter. If I log out of Twitter and my phone, I will literally not be able to use the website. Yep. I cannot log in on any other device. Whenever <laughs> I try to log in, it says, sorry, an error has occurred. I've cleared every cache, used other devices, used every single browser. It's literally, I think something's wrong with my Twitter account. And if... Excellent. Now, this is not to do with uh, all, all your boy Elon firing all the Twitter team because it's been like this for about six months. <laughs> no, it's been like this for like eight months, which yeah. has been great for productivity because at no point since I've owned this machine mm -hmm. have I actually been able to use Twitter on it. Excellent. Incredible. Anyway, he said, I just wanted to step in and say I heard loud and, loud and clear on the feedback with our current seasonal backbones. The team is excited to put some more creative risk in seasonal progression, but there will be some time before uh, the feedback catches, uh, yeah, catches the dev cycle. Uh, okay, is, is this just Destiny-specific things? Yeah. 
Well, uh, yeah, uh, they're adding new things to shake things up. Yeah, but, but reduce the, complexity and um, improve the synergy in your seasonal position and the rest of the game. So that's going for more of the hey, we're going to make this matter forever, as opposed to matter for this couple of weeks, which I think is. It's something that Dragonflight could do, depending on whether or not they... How they handle patching existing Renowns. Because obviously you look at the the frame and go, well, you're not going to add any more Renowns. You're not going to add any more factions, because you'd have to... I mean, they could. But, you know, they'd have to redesign the thing. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of uh, like, Ian's like, sorry, I really wanted to add four more, but... Jeff Lou just he wouldn't give me a scroll bar, so <laughs> I'm sorry we can't put them. In yeah, the game. so it, yeah, so it's like you look at the fact summer twenty five, summer thirty. You go, well, are they just going to slap all their stuff on and then give new ways to progress them? Are they going to add like, hey, here's a new faction to get to wrap up with? Here's the Jardine or something. Um, here's the Jardine and the Primalists and the Infinite. Uh, sorry, lower spoilers. Um, and then you grind those up, but you also grind the old ones up at the same time, and maybe new stuff. Uh, new zone gets ways to deal with to increase renown with the old factions so it constantly feels like it actually matters to your overall dragon fight progression as opposed to nothing will matter if you come back in 10.2 and don't play 10.1 yeah but then they have to kind of struggle the fact of oh you've come back in 10.2 after skipping 10.1 grind 400 renown fucko uh so that's a bit of a challenge i think for them but I'd like I I'll really pay attention to Destiny's updates and see how that actually feels for people, because well that'll be that'll be a while away yet. But at least they know that's a problem, and how do you how do you shake things up? So like the the other part of this conversation is how do they shake up rating and Mythic Plus to feel better without feeling? Because I think it's it's one of those things where I think that when you are a hardcore player of them, yeah. the differences will matter. But if you're not super hardcore and you're kind of there to play them and don't really think about like the, the soup minutia, then it'll all feel the same all the time. It's like the different affixes rotating dungeons from the old from old uh, content and then um, like the improvements they make to gearing and stuff. It's, like that's all going to matter to people who play Mythic Plus. They will feel that being different and go, oh, I'm excited to play Mythic Plus version, say 1.2 instead of 1.1. Whereas people who aren't super engaged with that will want to play Mythic Plus version 2, but then that version 2 might be too different for the people who like 1. And that's what they have yeah, to... They, like have a, to, they have to manage... They have to manage incremental changes for people who like it already versus people who want something uh, a little bit more wild. And that's where FF14's approach of here's horizontally stuff kind of makes sense, where they could have turned around and said, okay, your expert roulette is now fucking giga hard. Deal with it. Instead, they went, we'll make another dungeon. We'll make another dungeon. We'll make the Criterion dungeons and those will be like different things to do. But then that's not production friendly. That they, can, they only get away with that because they've nailed their production capabilities on the existing pillars of content and can go make it and go, ah, darn, we'll add another small pillar of content and you can work away with that. Here's the, the, here's the, the island. You can go fiddle around on your island. It's like, maybe that's... Because Blizzard tried to do that, but there's something about how... It, always turns out that it doesn't super feel quite yeah. as good and i don't really know why to How be honest can blizzard gets well i guess I, I kind of there's a lot of times i've talked about the idea of um more verticals of progression yeah more, more categories of, of progression and one of the reasons why i would like something like a player housing is i'd almost think back to when i played runescape Hmm. Uh, right where, you know, in RuneScape, you have the basic wooden chair. Oh, but you have the fancier wooden chair and the fancier chair and the fancier chair. And that was all got via crafting. Or, you know, you kill the big dragon, you mount its head on your mantelpiece or whatever. Hmm. Um, like the more granular customization and then unlockable elements and then social features and all of that stuff. Like, I'm not saying player housing because I think what the game really, you know, God, if it doesn't have a player house, it'll explode. What I'm kind of saying is like, oh, okay, but imagine if they had player housing. Think about all of the assets that they make for the game world. Think about all the creatures. Think about all the textures, all the everything. Okay, they could, and it would, obviously, you can't just take the thing and then immediately, you know, that is designed to be completely static and in the world and just plop it in to, a, I guess, a more sort of dynamic-like system like your player housing. 
Um, Because as Ian said, um, you know, the most that they could do right now is like garrisons. And I guess the way I put that to you guys is, imagine in your head, uh, this may be an easy way to think about it, but static dynamic. The static thing is just you can change between, you know, pre-made Lego sets that are already pre-made and pre-built. Stick, you can stick another statue in your garrison, a different one. Yeah. But and you, you know, can't place it somewhere else. Yeah. And then dynamic is you actually have the Lego bricks. Now, I'm not literally saying you build your house brick by brick, but you know what I mean. You can choose between the wooden wall, the night elf looking, you know, you can change what wall you want. You can change what shape the wall. You can do all like that FF14 like housing stuff. Um, the reason why I'd say that would be a good thing is because, yeah, it wouldn't be for everybody, but it would be for some people and for the people who it is for. Um, that is now an entire new category of reward that you can spread across the entire game. And there's probably plenty of raiders, mythic plusers, etc. that would like that. Or maybe a PvPer who gets kind of excited about the idea that they could make a, a boxing ring in, in their house. Because I'm pretty sure you could do that in RuneScape. You know, make like a little PvP arena in your house. Want to hold a private fucking dueling tournament with your friends? Yeah. Unlock the thing in your house. And, you know, then we can start to get some of that emergent social content. Uh, maybe people talking about like, oh, what if BFA had uh, had a boat or we had an airship? Oh, you could unlock some, 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 some things for your boat, for your airship. What if you had uh, a farming game, you know, uh, take the half hill farming from Mr. Pandaria, go absolutely half mad with it. And uh, there you go. That's a thing people could do out in the world. Maybe there's farmers in different zones and, you know, you can all do things with each other. Um, but that only exists if you have the farming thing that you can do. Uh, you know, ar- archaeology. That's one of the secondary professions that could be this sort of thing. And we do believe that they're working on some sort of revamp for that. So I guess, uh, you know, for, for me, it's that sort of thing. You could do it with classes, but I don't know exactly how you turn that uh, in stuff in the world. Yeah. You know, like just giving people basically different class skins. Hmm. Uh, right? Like, do you want to be a normal marksmanship hunter? Do you want to be a more sylvanas dark ranger marksmanship hunter? And those could just be different skins, you know, different, like, animations, different, uh, you know, effects. And that would be kind of expensive to do, uh, you know, like your Warlock Green Fire. But basically, yeah. if you want to populate the world with shit to do, well, the more ways a player can be rewarded, probably the better. Right, yeah, like that's. But if, that would, yeah. if the way that you glide in the game is a goblin glider, and a goblin glider is a goblin glider, then that's that. If it's like Guild Wars Two, where you have your glider, and your glider has its mastery track mm-hmm. of all the different things you can do and change, and you know, get better at with your glider, well, and suddenly the glider is a lot more content. Yeah, like the the dragon riding prof- uh, progression, the the equivalent of that in Guild Wars Two is so much longer. Yeah, I think... But Blizzard knew, like, no, for this, this is actually a core traversal feature for the whole world. This is a part of our core design. Everything else works with it. We need to just give people the, you know, the power now so that it feels really good and so they don't feel like it's down great. And I think they made the right call. I mean, there's even a post on, uh, I think it was the Blastar Bread or something, but it was, like, the design of the Dragon Isle summary, half of it is the dragon riding thing. And you go, well, that's a bit useless because th- this button has been useless since 10 hours into the expansion when it got all the glyphs. And obviously people will be getting the glyphs a little bit slower, but that's exactly it. Where if not for the fact I think Blizzard were hedging their bets and they were kind of worried about dragon riding and rightfully so, because I think I think feedback is profoundly positive, but it's not without diehard haters who go, give me my 310 AFK mount now, please, Blizzard, or I'll refund my game this is what i paid for i will charge back right? yeah so people aren't like people aren't seeing anything but a lot of people go that's fucking mental like the dragon riding is good but it's still you could see a world where that was a way 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 more in-depth thing but then they had and like progressing it took longer was harder but the progression felt better and you got more abilities instead of just four you got like stuff where you could like do a 180 turn and you, they made like really hard courses around the world you could imagine all of that but that would be like that is that is going to be a very hard pill to swallow for core traversal stuff yeah so it's like the more the more stuff like that they actually do which is frustrating because they did that in shadowlands but the framing was no one gave a shit where all of like the coven features had decent forms of aggression but they fumbled the execution on almost all of them yeah i think the only one that people liked was the tea party 
Path of Ascension was good in theory, but the grinding the currency out for it and the fact that it didn't work very much at the higher difficulties in the end later bosses just broke that entirely. I mean, it seems if like... If Path of Ascension was good, then it would be it would have been good, good, like, do more of this Blizzard. The, the path the, is just unfinished. Yeah, same and It seems like the, Chris left the company and no one... Yeah, no one's there to fix it, just sort of it. Yeah, when you think about the bugs and issues yep. that it had that just were unfixed for such a long time, yeah. it actually seems like they just dropped the ball in planning. Yeah, it's the same with the, like, because I never engaged with it much because I didn't, um, I didn't give a shit <laughs> for so long, but the Queen's Conservatory, where you grow the uh, wild yeah. seeds, outside of that feeling like a mobile farming game because of the time restraints and stuff, I feel like they could definitely do more of that in future. Just don't split it up based on what covenant someone's playing. And make it a bit more obvious and apparent. I think that kind of works. It's like I think I didn't like the I didn't like Zareth Mortis very much in terms of the cipher system because that was just do all the stuff for rep whatever else you'll get the ciphers. I felt like that wasn't what well, didn't really feel like there was much reason to progress that as far as I was concerned because that was for world content players and that's that wasn't me at the time. Now it's a bit more me now. So it's like the more things they can do to like that, the better we're the better we're going to be overall. But it's like they have the blueprint for it. They just need to get the execution right of do the half elf arm, do the path of ascension, do the brawler's guild. Just more things for people to literally yeah, sit down and go, here's something to do. And you know and what? Bra brawler's yeah. guild, and this might be a bit controversial, but brawler's guild and have loot. Have loot from the brawler's guild. Yeah. Maybe make it harder. Yeah. Imagine if Torghast got you loot up to normal raid. You, yeah. Can you think of how many motherfuckers well, they, they, would have been happily in Torghast being like, fuck yeah, I'm I'm just getting some loot here? Yeah. So seem seemingly with how everything else has been designed, they would be open to that. Seemingly. I think so. Yeah. It's just the how do they, and this is going to be a problem with patch content, because they have to keep the progression of gear down. They, have, they can't just go, right, there's a 500 item level jump because everyone goes, what the fuck, this is pointless. They want old stuff to feel relevant, but they can only give you gear from world content that's not like normal raid or like close to normal raid, theoretically. Otherwise, they would have done more. They didn't, so there must be a reason for it. So I think there's a world where um, it'd be difficult with patches because people usually come in with higher gear than like normal raid, but a world where Brawler's Guild is a lot more of a long tail feature in that maybe not even like... I wouldn't want it to be like daily or weekly rotating stuff, but even like daily rotating bosses that were kind of hard and you could them solo when you had to yeah. you had to fight them and you got currency that bought you gear and you had brawlers guild gear maybe not even gear maybe you'd uh in the same sense that pvp trinkets exist maybe there's like pvp like brawlers guild trinkets and when you're doing brawlers guild all your pve gear matters but your brawlers guild trinket matters a lot more because it gives you a huge amount of percentage of damage or you know something like uh, you take, I don't know, changes the buff you get when you're in the Brawler's Guild to like, it starts off and like you have 90% damage uh, dealt reduction and 90% more damage taken and then you progress that to go by 5 or 10% at a time. And if you're really good, you can overcome that and kill stuff early if you're really geared. But for other players, there's a progression of that trinket specifically and you do that through the currency that you get from the Brawler's Guild. Maybe you make that like a... a Every day you get 50 currency, you can refight the boss for an extra 5 or an extra 10 or something, so you can farm it out if you want. In the same way that right now there's stuff that's farm, farmed out, that can be farmed out. It's one of the things, you think of that, you think, oh, well, that's like a combat kind of thing, and that's kind of, that's a little bit challenging people, a little bit, um, it actually involves combat, whereas obviously most things in the game right now don't involve too much combat. Obviously there's like grinding stuff, but that's, well, I suppose that you know, grinding does involve combat, but in the, in the harder sense, in the solo sense, not the group sense. So you can easily see how stuff like that would work. It's just about, do they have the resources to make it like a full bit of thing to do? Is the question, because you've got all the boss design, you've got all the combat design, stuff like that. So I feel like they could ultimately just go, here's Brawler's Guild, it's more than ever before. And you get a whole stack of rewards because you get really cool spikes for your dragon. Even that would work in like 10.1. It was Underground Brawler's Ring. Yeah. Stuff like that. But then even... Um, had a lot of other ideas and they've all just sort of vanished. Because they're all, there's, there's so many things that could be their own uh, pieced off vertical progression that you could go and do at any time. It's just about, <clears throat> it's just about making sure you can go and do them anytime and it feels properly that way. 
but like it's a lot of it comes down to how infinitely you can just like grind stuff out that I think works super well for how people would want to play. So I'd love to I love I love this I'd love to see what they want to do for tempo one. That'll be the that'll be the proof of how much uh success they've had in terms of the back end with their current stuff. Very, very good. Theoretically, I think. I imagine the the you know fundamental changes to raid or M plus anytime soon. Which means it'll just be alright. More content, please. You've got 700 staff. You can probably make it now. Yeah, it's probably going to happen. So that's why I'm just excited to see what these patches look like. Yep. Um, yeah, like uh, we'll really know if this truly is a newish era if uh, these patches come a little bit quicker and just seem like a little bit more uh, wisely put together given the success of 10.0.